What's up, everybody? So every so often, people store their bikes in my garage for safekeeping, and I mean, somebody's gotta ride it, right? Well, in today's edition of Random Bikes, the Harley-Davidson V-Rod ended up in my garage for my dad. Unfortunately, after too many knee surgeries and his unwillingness to switch to a trike, here we are. Well, we're gonna make the best of it, do an overview of this bike, go cosplay as a badass, and give it that awe-inspiring motopologist review. In 2001, Harley introduced their newest Alphabet Soup lineup called the VRSC, standing for V-Twin Racing Street Custom. This was a water-cooled motor and made the most horsepower of any Harley produced before that time. This was massive changes and caught a lot of people off guard, but the thing that got most people was the co-designer of the motor. Well, neither the quarter-mile killer, the destroyer, or its predecessor, the VR1000, are within my tax bracket. This 2007 V-Rod fits just the bill. The V-Rod runs a Porsche co-designed motor, 1130cc dual overhead cams with four valves per cylinder, making about 125 horsepower and 85 foot-pounds of torque. To put that in comparison, the Aprilia V-Twins ran about 125 horsepower but only 70 foot-pounds of torque at a higher RPM. This is also a 60-degree V-Twin, which deviates from the traditional Harley 45-degree V-Twin. The V-Rod was built with one thing in mind, straight-line domination, and the chassis does just that. In 2007, they revised it to be able to fit a 240 series tire. Running big and little up front pays homage to the hot rod air. The suspension on the bike is a twin exposed shocks with preload adjustability and the front forks run no adjustability. Simple hot rod. Now Harley opened up the trick playbook on this one. Having a low saddle height plus a hidden fuel cell underneath the seat lowers the center of gravity. The battery is actually placed underneath the gauge as a common trick by drag racers to keep the front end from coming up. It does require you to move the faux gas tank plus the airbox to get to it. Not as bad as the Ducati ST3, still a pain in the ass. So with a hot rod setup aimed at getting younger butts on bikes, why do the purists hate this bike so much? Let's take it out for a ride today and see what we think. Showcasing American muscle is what Harley Davidson is all about. And while this motor was designed by Porsche, it doesn't deviate far from Harley's heritage. You'll find that cruising the V-Rod will get plenty of admirers looking for where that sound's coming from or trying to figure out what you're riding as a 240 series tire pokes past the rear fender. The bike's lower in torque hesitates from no one as it bullies its way around town and through traffic laying a thick rubber stripe on heavy throttle. The V-Rod's powerful motor makes highway on-ramps into a grand entrance as you twist the throttle and erupt with power heading for the rear wheel via belt drive. The tack races from 5,000 to 8,000 RPM when peak power is made, and a quick shift up another gear and the power band is still on tap. Looking down will quickly reveal you're well past 100 miles an hour and should probably tone it down a notch. Settling back down to avoid a night in the county, the bike just purrs along waiting for you to twist the throttle opening its 53 millimeter throttle bodies. The DX or AW model V-Rods with a 240 series tire was destined not to be a track day junkie's bike of choice. Harley never envisioned it to be anything but a show stopper, straight line bruiser, and a round town cruiser. While the 180 series tire found on the SC and A models would be better suited for handling, you can still do light corners on the 240 series chassis. However, don't get in over your head thinking you can throttle the straight and then back it into a corner of a tight decreasing radius turn with elevation changes, as the V-Rod has a Rolodex of negatives towards that. The V-Rod runs an extremely low saddle height, around 27 inches. It makes the bike feel lighter, simply put, you're flat-footed. The handlebar reach is not far, and the lower lumbar support from a banana-like seat helps quite a bit. The forward controls are a tad bit of a reach, even with my 32-inch inseam, and it could use a windscreen if you plan on doing any sort of traveling. For comfort, I'd give it a 6. The low saddle height, combined with a Torque Monster motor, can make a normal commute into a stoplight-to-stoplight -stoplight drag race. The bike basically implores you to throttle up at all times. While wrist discipline may override the bike's desire, the motor will respond by lugging along in the low RPMs. One great thing about the V-Rod though, is it's water-cooled motor. Sitting in traffic will no longer mean you have to shut it down and pull off to avoid thermal overload. A lack of storage though, you're wearing a backpack anywhere you need to go. For commuting, I'd give it a seven just because I found it so appeasing to find openings in the road to throttle from 5,000 to 7,000 RPMs. The V-Rod is about as bare bones as you can get on a cruiser and the lack of windscreen means you're going to catch all that air in your chest. 
Even with a good sweeping bar, the ability to hang on during full throttle is a challenge as the forward controls and handlebar reach puts you in an awkward position. Entering the highway and maneuvering around blind spots is easy as the motor makes great power all around. For highway riding, I'd give it a 6. While some may be able to ride through a set of twisties on an oversized rear tire, I'm not one of them. A T4040 series tire on this bike required an immense amount of effort to get the bike into cornering position and at the same time trying to keep the tiny sidewall from sliding. The 19 inch front wheel does the bike no favors and makes the chassis feel a little sketchier in the tighter corners. The forward controls give a rider a poor body position for quick twitch handling. As mentioned earlier, the V-Rod is a Kylo Ren to the AMA VR1000 in terms of handling, joining the dark side of straight line racing but leaving behind the ability to corner well. I liken it to asking Don Garlitz to bring out a front engine dragster to an autocross meet. For handling, I'd give it a 5. Acceleration. This is where the V-Rod shines. This is where the bike makes up for all its other flaws. Harley knew this and used this motor in the drag strip only bike, the Destroyer, getting the bike deep into the nines straight out of the box. If the chassis could actually put down the power given, the bike would give the Japanese sport bikes a run for the money from a dig. If it could hook up, I'd give it an 8, but seeing as how I spent more time laying rubber, I've got to knock it down to 7. Overall, the Harley-Davidson V-Rod is a scrapper that didn't mind picking a fight with the reigning champion of speed, the Japanese. Instead of following tradition with a 45 degree air cooled V-Twin and increasing displacement to the point of switching to cubic inches, it changed designs differently from any other Harley before. The thought behind it from Harley was to get an even bigger fan base, but the purists have always found reasons to hate it, as a chant of discord sounded out loudly, not my Harley, as if the new president from the opposing party had just been elected. Unfortunately in 2018, these purists won their case and the V-Rod met its demise, slightly blamed on diminishing sales and more so on Harley focusing on its CVO lineup. So if you like my review on the Harley-Davidson V-Rod and you want to see more reviews just like it, click subscribe, like, comment, do something. Let me know what you think.